tucked away in the southwestern corner of the South Island lies a 1.2 million hectare time capsule of a beautiful prehistoric New Zealand. Luckily, keen adventurers can explore Fiordland's unique landscape through one of the many walking tracks that weave through this glacially carved land. One of the most challenging tramps in Fiordland offers a truly unique experience. The Gertrude Saddle Route. The Gertrude Saddle Route is a tough, challenging and exposed 7 km route that takes you from the side of State Highway 94 up Gertrude Valley to the top of the saddle and back down. This route can often be mistaken as a simple day walk, but this is definitely not the case. It's a very demanding climb and should only be attempted by those with a high level of backcountry alpine experience and fitness. Gertrude Saddle Route should only be attempted in the peak of summer as snow covers the route from early autumn to late spring. The route also crosses many avalanche paths making this tramp simply impassable during winter. Summer sees an average daily temperature of 8 to 9 degrees and remember this is the heart of Fiordland so rain can be expected for over 200 days of the year. You'll need to cross multiple rivers and traverse steep granite slabs on this route. If rain or snow is present then don't go as this makes the route extremely dangerous. You'll need warm and wet weather gear, as well as a strong pair of tramping boots to comfortably bring you home. Keep in mind there is no cell phone reception, so a personal locator beacon is recommended. As with all walks and tramps in New Zealand, make sure you leave your intentions with a trusted contact and inform them when you've finished your tramp. You can find out more about leaving your intentions at the Mountain Safety Council website. Before you begin the tramp, make sure you're in the right place. A small sign on the main road marks Gertrude Valley, and this is where you'll find the start of the route. This is important as the entrance to the Homer Saddle Alpine route is a kilometre down the road, and occasionally people have mistaken the two. Your day begins in an alpine meadow along a well-formed and well-marked route. This well-formed section of the track quickly turns into a basic route with very limited markings, so you will need good route finding and tramping experience past this point. There are no alternative routes or shelters on this tramp, so do not go any further if the weather is poor. If you get caught out in bad weather, make sure you take extreme care to stick to the route, as wandering off-route has led to multiple fatalities. From here, you will start the climb up to the saddle. This is where good footwear will come in handy as the terrain consists mainly of rock and scree and gets steep fast. Make sure you stick to the route as unstable rock and exposed cliff faces are everywhere. After a bit of climbing, you will reach the waterfall area. This has proven to be one of the most hazardous parts of this tramp, so pay close attention here. Just below the waterfall, there is a river crossing point, marked by large orange triangles. It is absolutely essential that you cross at this point. It is easy to miss this crossing, especially on your way back down. If you miss this crossing, then immediately turn back and retrace your steps until you find it again. After the waterfall, the route becomes quite steep again, but now you have a decent climb on some very slippery loose rocks. You'll need to do a mixture of tramping and scrambling to get up here, as rocks can easily slide out from underneath you and roll down toward anyone behind you. Stay as a group and talk about your movements, help others out and ensure you take your time to pass through the section. As you move up the route, the scree will eventually give way to big granite slabs. Take extreme care when you are on these slabs as they can be very slippery when wet or icy and one slip here could be fatal. Follow the orange triangles along the granite slabs as they will lead you along the safest path. This will greatly reduce your chances of slipping. Continuing along the slabs will bring you to a steep section with steel cables installed. Use these cables to help you get up to Black Lake. Black Lake is a good spot to have a break but don't linger too long as it's not too far to the saddle. From here, you'll have more granite slabs to climb. Again, there are some steel cables to use, but be careful as it can get very slippery up here. After a bit of rock scrambling, you will eventually reach the saddle. This is one of the most exposed spots on the route and high winds can be a problem. However, if the weather is good, this is a beautiful spot to have some lunch and take some photos. From up here, you will see if any bad weather is coming in from the west and if you're lucky, you'll have a great view of Milford Sound. Make sure you stay back from the edge of the saddle as there is a 700 metre drop to the valley floor. Also, don't wander too far from the saddle as climbing the higher peaks is only suitable for highly skilled and properly equipped mountaineers. 
It's important to remember that the top of the saddle is only the halfway point. You now have to do everything again, but in reverse. The descent is always much harder than the ascent, and injuries or getting lost are much more likely to occur on the way down. Take extra care with your foot placement and allow plenty of time to make it down safely. Remember to pay special attention to the waterfall area as the crossing point can be easily missed. Look for the orange marker poles and move from one to the other. It's essential to only cross at this marked crossing point and not to keep following the river down as there may be very large cliffs and unsupported slopes below which have resulted in multiple fatalities. Then you just need to keep following the route all the way down and out of the valley. Although this trip could be considered a short option, it is one of the most advanced day trips in New Zealand. Its difficulty should not be underestimated, but it is a rewarding challenge for those who have prepared accordingly and have the appropriate experience. Remember not to attempt this tramp outside of summer or in less than perfect weather conditions. If conditions aren't good or you're not sure Gertrude Saddle is right for you, then we highly recommend alternatives such as Lake Marion or Key Summit. Both of these tracks are also accessed from the Tiano Milford Highway. Make sure you check out the official Fiordland National Park weather forecast at metservice.com. Finally, seek advice on the latest information on track conditions by talking to the dock staff at the Fiordland National Park Visitor Centre in Tiano. No matter what, you can't escape the beauty of Fiordland.